uh, what does it take to be a, the guy or gal who who uh, who brings up the point that this proxy might be outdated? I guess, what does it take to have a culture that enables that in the meeting? Because that's a very uncomfortable thing to bring up at a meeting. Okay. We all showed Lex, up here, it's a Friday. Wait, wait. This is such, you have just asked a million dollar question. So th this is, this is what you're, the, if I generalize what you're asking, mm -hmm. You were talking in general about truth telling. Yeah. And we humans are not really truth seeking animals. <laughs> we are social animals. Yeah, we are. And, you know, uh, take you back in time 10,000 years and you're in a small village. Mm -hmm. If you go along to get along, you can survive, you can procreate. If you're the village truth teller, you might get clubbed to death in the middle of the night. Truths are often, they don't want to be heard because important truths can be um, uncomfortable, they can be awkward, they can be exhausting. Impolite. Yes. And all that kind of stuff. Challenging. Yeah. Uh, they can make people defensive, even if that's not the intent. But any high-performing organization, whether it's a sports team, a business, you know, a political organization, an activist group, I don't care what it is, any high-performing organization has to have mechanisms and a culture that supports truth-telling. One of the things you have to do is you have to talk about that. And you have to talk about the fact that it takes energy to do that. You have to talk to people. You have to remind people it's okay that it's uncomfortable. Um, you have to literally tell people it's not what we're designed to do as humans. It's not really, it's kind of a side effect. You know, we can do that, but it's not how we survive. We mostly survive by being social animals um, and being cordial and cooperative. And um, that's really important. And so there's a, you know, science is all about truth telling. It's actually a very formal mechanism for trying to tell the truth. And even in science, you find that it's hard to tell the truth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, even, you know, you're supposed to have a hypothesis and test it and find data and reject the hypothesis and so on. It's not easy. But even in science, there's like, the senior scientists and the junior scientists, Correct. and then there's a hierarchy of humans where it's the somehow social. seniority <laughs> somehow seniority matters yes. in the scientific process, which is it and that's not. true inside companies too. Yeah. And so you want to set up your culture so that the most junior person can overrule the most senior person if they have data, um, and 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 that really is about trying to you know. There are little things you can do. So, for example, in every meeting that I attend, I always speak last. And I know from experience that, you know, if I speak first, even very strong-willed, um, highly intelligent, high-judgment participants in that meeting will wonder, well, if Jeff thinks that, I came in this meeting thinking one thing, but maybe I'm not right. And so you can do little things like if you're the most senior person in the room, go last. Let everybody else go first. In fact, ideally, let's try to have the most junior person go first and the second, and try to go in order of seniority um, so that you can hear everyone's opinion in a kind of unfiltered way. Because we really do, we actually literally change our opinions. If somebody who you really respect says something, it makes you change your mind a little. So you're saying implicitly or explicitly give permission for people to have a strong opinion that as long as it's backed by data. Yes, and sometimes it can even, by the way, a lot of our most powerful truths turn out to be hunches. They turn out to be based on anecdotes. Yeah. They're intuition-based. And sometimes you don't even have strong data. But you may, know, you may know the person well enough to trust their judgment. You may feel yourself leaning in. It may resonate with a set of anecdotes you have. And then you may be able to say, you know, I, I, something about that feels right. Let's go collect some data on that. Let's try to see if we can actually know whether it's right. 
But for now, let's not disregard it because it feels right. You can also fight inherent bias. There's an optimism bias. Like if there are two interpretations of a new set of data and one of them is happy and one of them is unhappy, it's a little dangerous to jump to the conclusion that the happy interpretation is right. <laughs> you may want to sort of compensate for that human bias of of looking for, you know, trying to find the silver lining and say, look, this that might be good, but I'm going to go with it's bad for now until we're sure. <laughs>